government is so corrupt. I say, how many of you can swear that in your life you have not offered a government officer bribe? How many? Because the, uh, corruption is the private sector that bribes public officers. So we all have to stop. So let us not argue about that. Let us agree that this is not the issue today. It's not about saying that the government has earned your trust. Now let's look at the impact on the economy of this subsidy. Between January, I'm giving you more facts. I mean, other than facts given by the, uh, by the quality minister. Between January and November, the total amount of foreign exchange we sold to petroleum marketers at WDAS and Interbank was in excess of $8 billion. Over the same period, the total amount of subsidy that was given to these same marketers was another $8 billion. That is $16 billion. $16 billion. Now, I'm going to ask you, it's actually $16.2 billion, if you want to know the numbers. Now, do you know what? The total amount, at least from my records, the total amount of money that the government earned, that came to us in the Federation Reserves, from the entire oil sector in the same period, was 200,000 less than that. We spent more money paying for LCs and paying subsidy than we earned from the oil sector. Now ask, ask yourselves, is this a country? Is this an economy? You're borrowing, you're borrowing we have spent 1.4 trillion naira, one third, one third of total government expenditure, subsidizing petroleum products. I'll give you another number. Ngozi has given you reserves per capita. Isa Remu said, let's talk about production. Let's talk about production. We produce 2.2 million barrels a day. With our population of 160 million, every day Nigeria produces one barrel of oil for 80 Nigerians. Okay? One barrel for 80 Nigerians. Look at all the other OPEC countries. The nearest to us is Algeria, which has one barrel for 30. And Algeria is a gas producing country. Saudi Arabia produces one barrel of oil for every three citizens every day. Okay? Now, you produce one barrel for 80. Your share of revenue of that barrel is maybe 50%. So you can, for effectively, effectively say it's one barrel for 160 Nigerians. They need power. They need infrastructure. They need medical care. They need food. You need to pay salaries. Women are dying every day in childbirth. Children are dying of malaria. People are dying of AIDS. You need roads. You need petroleum subsidy. Please give me your hierarchy of priorities. What would you sacrifice? We are taking one third of that money and paying petroleum subsidy, leaving two thirds. And out of that two thirds, Ngozi will tell you, 70% goes to pay salaries. The same people are talking about government expenditure. If you say you are going to retrench workers in the civil service, they will be up in arms. How do you reduce salary? How do you reduce the salary bill? The same people that have said we want minimum wage of 18,000 naira are saying you are spending too much. Where is the money going to come from? <laughs> to, pay, to pay those salaries, to maintain those civil servants, to provide health care, you need to free up resources. I mean, this is what economics is about. Right. Now, to come and tell me that there's going to be hardship and difficulty is not an economic argument. The economic argument is to say, this is the cost of removing subsidy. What is the cost of not removing it? And let me tell you something. This government can continue paying this subsidy to 2015. It will not come down. But the next government will be saddled with a debt burden that it cannot maintain. And the Greece situation will be nothing compared to where we are. So, to think that, you know, these decisions are not easy. Europe today is facing a crisis. In 2008, the price of oil crashed from $147 a barrel to $40. Up to the week to $37. Up to two weeks, three weeks before then, I was in Washington. 
in the World Bank meeting. They had different models and projections. Oil price will never fall below $85 a barrel. It came to 37 The only reason, the only reason this economy continued growing was that we had reserves of $62 billion, which are now down to 30 That was a shock absorber. We don't have that shock absorber today. If the oil price crashes again by 30-40%, if the Naira goes to 200 Naira to the dollar, when you can no longer pay salaries, when inflation goes to 18% because of monetized, we have create, printed money, then we will know what a crisis is. You have to prepare yourself. What happens? You can see Europe every day. What happens? China is slowing down. There's a property bubble in China. India has had inflation. The Reserve Bank has increased rates 12 times. Inflation has not come down. Brazil is slowing down. All the countries that provided the engine of growth in 2008 are in slowdown mode. Do you know what we are facing? Are you in this world? <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, instead of, instead, of preserving, instead of preserving your government balance sheet so that in the event of a crisis you can cope, you want to continue paying 1 trillion naira. 1 trillion naira in subsidy. To who? To who? No, sorry. No, wait. So, 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 so fine. So, so we talk, we talk about costs. And, and you know, 